This is Jared Lakefield, a novel by Don Fensler, part 51, The Conclusion. It is finished. Jennifer, Jennifer and I hugged and then pulled away from one another as if we were confused as to whether we were together or all alone, whether we were in this together or not. I was weeping. Jennifer reached over like like a mother to a child, and cut my face in her hands and asked, Miss Sean, was Jared God or the devil? And at that moment I knew we were truly together, and I knew I never loved Jennifer more than this moment. I don't know, I said, then answered limply, maybe he was both. Where is everyone, Miss Sean? If they are all dead, where are the bodies? Jennifer asked, me, Jennifer asked me. These were questions I had also, but we both knew they were dumb questions. Questions we really didn't care about for some reason. Questions that came from that empty time before we knew Jared Lakefield. I don't know, I said, as truly I had no idea. The earth was bright and white. The buildings around us shimmered in the sun. I felt like I wanted to see people moving, the cars moving, but all was bright and quiet and dead. Every piece of metal and glass strangely seemed to have a life of its own. I was not scared, but I felt sad. I grabbed Jennifer again. We both held on as, for, as if for dear life. We held on for dear life, though, we never, even though we were holding on for dear life, we had never felt more at peace in our lives. I felt that as I embraced Jennifer. What is going on, Miss Sean? asked Jennifer, but I knew she wasn't expecting an answer. And then there was this flash of light, then darkness, then light, then this sound of an angel singing in the sky, then another flash, and Timothy the cripple stood in front of us, and he didn't speak. He just looked at us without emotion. His eyes did not move. Are you a part of this? I suddenly yelled out. I was feeling angry and cynical again. A part of my own self was still there, trying to hold on. I wondered about myself. Was I a child of the devil or an, or an angel on high? From moment to moment, I had no idea what I was thinking, whether I was happy or sad, calm or angry, whether I was all good or evil, or whether all that had happened was good or evil. I didn't want to think or judge at this moment. I have, I w I have been sent by the Father to tell you what you and Jennifer are to do, said Timothy Mannion simply. I knew at this moment that it had been Timothy the cripple who had fired the shots in the arena. I let my angry self, my entire be being, have its fling. What if we fucking don't want to do it, I muttered. It was the old Miss Sean Lomax speaking now. It was as if Timothy hadn't heard me and he said this, As Jared Lakefield told you, it will be just you and Jennifer on earth from that, from this time on. Please have faith in Jared Lakefield and the Father. Life on earth, human life, has become meaningless as he told you. As he told you, the lowest ant had, had life possessing more meaning and purpose and joy than the highest, most holy human being on earth. Think back, Michonne. All the people wandering around aimlessly, their eyes on these little screens and their heads in the clouds and in the gutters, their hearts as empty and cold as the deepest um, Arctic crevice. Man despise man, Timothy continued. Man, when I say man, I mean man, woman, and child was so disgusted with himself he could not look into the eyes of another man anymore. So he looked into a screen or the dirt below his feet or into their desolate hearts, which was looking into an abyss that, was, that had no bottom and no end. 
It was all a stream of thoughts without direction or end, without spirit or emotion or even will to live. If there was one hope for the human species, the father and Jared Lakefield would have given them a chance, would have given them all eternity to all eternity to pull themselves back from the abyss but there was nothing like that there was not even a sliver of hope there was no hope at all man the human species had thrown it away it was making no effort no effort at all to pull themselves back into the arms of the father into the present moment when man should have been vomiting at the sight of his own image in the mirror, he was instead embracing his own holiness and beauty and taking a photo of it, photo of it. Michonne, do you see Michonne? Do you see Jennifer? There was no hope. God the Father gave the human species every chance to pull itself back from the edge, but man, the human species, instead chose to dive in, dive in deeper and laugh with joy spitting in the, in the face of the truly joyful being they could have been. I looked at Timothy after he finished. He, even he looked very tired. Jennifer spoke out now to my amazement, speaking what I was thinking, though I had thought that Jennifer had moved beyond this. I thought she was beyond me. But here was the old Jennifer speaking. But you had no right to make a judgment like that, Jennifer said, to decide what human beings no longer had a right to live, that human life was no longer worth, worth living. That was not Jared Lakefield's choice to make. Her voice quivered but was strong. I have never felt so in love with her. It was not I who decided, said Timothy Mannion calmly, but the father through Jared Lakefield. I knew at that moment that it had been Timothy the cripple who had fired the shots in the arena. I was even sure, more sure of that. I started to speak, but Timothy raised his hand and said, It is done. It is finished. I am done here. There is nothing you can do now except live in the world you live in now. He paused. You cannot turn back the clock. We have to obey. Obey the Father and live as Jared Lakefield taught you. It is the only way. Do you understand? It is the way. Jared Lakefield was a liar, I said without emotion. But I knew within those lies was truth. The truth. I will go now, Miss Sean and Jennifer, said Timothy Mannion. I have been sent to tell you the wishes of the Father, and that is to live in joy and to produce children who will live in joy and love and never know no want or frustration or doubt in life or doubt the infinite love the Father feels for them. They will live for the present, for the present and nothing else. And with, mo and, moment by, and with moment by moment gratitude towards the Father. The sun, sh the sun shone down brightly, and a soft wind began blowing, and then Timothy slowly faded from view. I said, wait, and Jennifer ran to the spot where Timothy stood, but we knew he was gone. And we knew Jennifer, Jennifer and I were alone, truly alone. Miss Sean and Jennifer, we have braced again. Do you think we are really the only ones left on earth? Jennifer asked me softly, as she had asked me early, earlier. I don't know. Jennifer always speaks the truth, I said, even though a profound part of me thought that Jennifer was both the truth and the lie. But now the truth and the lie were now, mer were, were now merged and as one. And I knew also that Jennifer and I were alone, the only two left on earth. I don't know, I said. I should be scared, I should be angry, but I don't feel scared or angry. It's stupid, but I feel calm. I haven't felt this calm ever. And you, Jennifer, how do you feel now? 
I am totally without thought or opinion or judgment, Miss Sean, said Jennifer, crying softly. But I am not scared or angry or even sad. I don't know what's going on. I nodded and felt my peace, felt the peace in my heart, in our hearts. I felt the f that we were together and in peace. I felt no reason to say anything to Jennifer, but just to look at her and think about how much I loved her. We were silent for some, for quite some time. Then Jennifer asked, Michonne, what shall we do now? I don't know, I said again. And I couldn't believe how at peace and in love with Jennifer I felt. And Jennifer and I looked into one another's eyes and smiled as the enormous sun shone down on us. This is the end of Jared Lakefield, a novel by Don Fensler.